In the wee hours of the morning, when the city lies asleep, ever pause to ponder the grind of the 9 to 5 rat race? Greetings, my friends. I'm here to pry open the doors of perception about the daily toil that society has normalized. Let's embark on a thought-provoking journey that may very well redefine your understanding of work, contribution, and the grander scheme of life as we know it. Did those manicured fingers of yours ever plow the earth, wield a hammer, or log in the hours that etch lines of fatigue? In our modern world, the judgment of one's labor seems misplacate a man with dirt under his nails envies the clean-cut driver of a shiny car. But why resent the man on a different path when the choice to walk a clean road lies within us all? It's a common misconception that society as it stands, with its predefined structures of employment or menial jobs, is the unalterable reality. Yet, if we glance across the myriad cultures in the span of human history, it's evident our behavioral repertoire is rich and diverse. We aren't predestined to man the cash registers or fry fast food for eternity. There's a potential universe where every individual has a role, not just a mere job, but a purposeful contribution to the larger society. Imagine a world reminiscent of a primal village where barter thrives. I exchange my crafted spears for your leather skins where each person's skill adds value to the communal tapestry. But alas, we have veered off course, enslaved to the cods of industrial juggernauts. We ensconce ourselves inside corporate behemoths, surrendering our days to lifeless cubicles, becoming mere nodes in the great machinery of capitalism. We trade in passion for productivity, a fire for a flicker, embracing a stark existence devoid of genuine connection to the sweat of our brows. Our system, my friends, is a voracious beast that devours individuality. It enforces a code of conduct so rigid, stifling the beat of human hearts lest an off-color joke threatens the sterile sanctity of the corporate coffers. And so, we hang our humanity at the door, donning uniforms undesired, partaking in tasks that ensnare rather than emancipate. But what of the fruits born from this life of labor? We return to our abodes, to the hollow embrace of material treasures, the latest tech, the sleekest gadgets, all but ephemeral salves for the achromatic souls we become. Life, the grand kaleidoscope of experiences, is reduced to the drudgery of work, the eternal chase of the next bobble, the fleeting high of a purchase. Does this resonate with you? Ever felt tangled in this snare, this relentless pursuit of a happiness ever so elusive? I know the echo of this trap, for once I was its quarry, ensnared within its relentless jaws. But liberation lies in the revelation. For those unacquainted with the bars of this subtle cell, they are blind to their captivity, mistaking their chains for commendations, their small office perks as the epitome of success. Let me tell you, the barren truth is that we are mere cogs, disposable and replaceable within a colossal, indifferent machine that lusts for profit. Now, before this revelation drowns us in despair, let me guide you through an epiphany. Understand, we aren't condemned to this fate. Recall this fact as we delve deeper into the crevices of society's constructs, examining alternatives and perhaps, discovering paths less traveled but more fulfilling. If my words have sparked a flicker of intrigue, then do yourself the honor of hitting subscribe, liking, and ringing that notification bell. For in doing so, you align with the legion of thinkers, the seekers of truth in a world frothing with the foam of the mundane. As we gather pace, consider this. Have you ever contemplated the alternatives to the merciless wheel of modern employment? Have you ever dreamt of breaking free from the steel jaws of routine, to craft a life where your passion fuels your sustenance, where your talents forge your future? It's a realm where personal finance isn't just about hoarding but about investing in a life of substance. In the labyrinth of investments, mortgages, and loans, isn't there a path that leads to a place of wisdom and balance? Where insurance is not a grudge purchase but a wise step towards safeguarding the fruits of your passion. Let's dissect this further, shall we? The investment in real estate isn't just about acquiring soil and stone but securing a haven for creativity and a sanctuary where the divine masculine and wisdom speak. In the frenzied bazaar of digital marketing and high-flying tech, could there not be a niche that resonates with your inner voice rather than suffocating it? When was the last time you sat down and evaluated your contributions to the vast orchestra of humanity? Are you a vibrant violin, a muted trumpet, or a silenced drum? Pause and ponder attorney wrangling over legal jargon, the credit advisor parsing financial mazes, or the software developer coding late into the night. Is there not a thread connecting their expertise with your innate potential? Could trading time for money be supplanted by trading skill for fulfillment? Rather than donate your precious hours to a system indifferent to your essence, could you not claim a life where each day is an opus of your own composing? Yet. Here I implore you to maintain a steely resolve, as the territory we traverse is fraught with the siren calls of comfort and conformity. 
These calls beckon you back to the fetters you just shrugged off. Temptation is rife, alluring as ever, with the corporate sages preaching the gospel of job security, health benefits, and retirement plans. And you might ask, what's wrong with that? Isn't that the wise way to live a life? Ah, oh, my fellow voyagers, herein lies the great conundrum. What price do we pay for this security? The shackling of the spirit, the imprisonment of innovation, the burial of the dreams that once soared the boundless skies of possibility. As we approach the conclusion of our odyssey today, one must reflect. What chains are you ready to break? What new vistas are you willing to explore? In a world in the grasp of potential recession, in the unpredictable currents of modern dating, investing in the most precious of commodities yourself becomes paramount. We draw this dialogue to a close not in defeat but in the unshakable belief that change is but a decision away. If this narrative stirred something within you, if it gifted you with a morsel of insight or a beacon of hope, then consider expressing your appreciation. If you found value in our shared journey, a symbolic gesture awaits in the description below. Through the act of giving, we complete the cycle of value we've created here today. Your support, dear viewers, is the testament to our combined pursuit of a life less ordinary. A life replete with the richness of purpose and depth of joy that every man, every strong successful male, is due. Thank you for walking this path with me. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and never settle for the mundane. Greetings viewers, today we embark on a thought-provoking journey into the mind's dark corridors, where we differentiate the enigmas of psychopathy and sociopathy. While these terms often conjure images of villainy and danger, they're not as cut and dried as pop culture suggests. By now, you might wonder, am I within arm's reach of a psychopath or sociopath? And how can I tell them apart? Brace yourself, for today, we're diving deep into this chilling topic that's both riveting and unsettling. The terms psychopath and sociopath are indeed strewn around rather loosely, often used synonymously to describe someone who appears, for lack of a more delicate phrase, unhinged. But it's vital to note that labeling someone a psychopath or a sociopath merely due to an unsavory act or cold demeanor doesn't just lack kindness it might miss the mark of accuracy entirely. Would you recognize the signs that differentiate these individuals? Who among us hasn't encountered a person exuding such traits? Whether it's a question that piques your interest or a genuine concern, the nuances between psychopathy and sociopathy remain a captivating subject. So, before we venture further, consider your awareness of these terms. Are you confident in distinguishing between the two? These concepts, while overlapping, contain unique characteristics that set one apart from the other. To understand these distinctions, we delve into the realm of the American Psychiatric Association, who meticulously catalog mental disorders including these perplexing personalities. Psychopathy and sociopathy fall into the broader classification of Antisocial Personality Disorder ASPD, within the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. While the latest edition, the DSM-5, does not explicitly list psychopathy or sociopathy as distinct disorders, the behaviors and tendencies related to these terms are encapsulated within the ASPD diagnosis. A critical component for individuals with ASPD is an unstable or exaggerated sense of self. A child begins forging their identity by the age of three, understanding they are a separate entity from others. As they mature, they learn about themselves, their distinctive traits, and this sense of self becomes more complex and grounded. It frames how they interact with the world and people around them. Those with ASPD exhibit a distorted perception of self. Their identity could be underdeveloped or, contrarily, grossly inflated. This affects their empathy and aspirations, influencing actions that range from seeking grandiose achievements to struggling with routine consistency in their relationships. Moving on to another hallmark empathy deficiency. Sociopaths and psychopaths are commonly perceived as devoid of this crucial human trait. They lack the innate capacity to relate to others' emotions, posing the question, are they completely unable to care or love? While they may not be utterly incapable of emotive connections, their limited empathy often leads to uncaring and detrimental behavioral patterns. A further distinguishing trait is their pathological personality features. Unsettling traits like a lack of morality, attention-seeking, antagonism, and unusual behaviors may serve as indicators. But here's an essential consideration. Children naturally exhibit some of these traits as they develop, but as one transitions to adulthood, a well-rounded self-awareness and empathetic comprehension should be in place. If a person's behavior fails to mature, marking them as harmful or aberrant, professional intervention could be necessary. Herein lies an essential difference, the capability to form emotional connections. 
Sociopaths can often cultivate ties despite their lack of full empathy, this doesn't make them recluses. In fact, they can be quite charming and closely connected to people in their lives. Psychopaths, however, struggle profoundly with bonding, even if they can superficially woo acquaintances. Genuine attachment eludes them. Aggressive tendencies further differentiate the two. Psychopaths tend to illustrate more violent behaviors think of how serial killers are often typified. While sociopaths may hurt through emotional manipulation, they are less inclined towards violence. Their impulsivity can stem from the emotions they do feel, although muted. My conjecture is that psychopaths experience emotions more faintly, rendering aggressive actions more justifiable in their eyes, merely as tactics to achieve their ends, with people as pawns in their strategic games. If a sociopath engages in surprising or harmful acts, they often rationalize it away, whereas psychopaths may meticulously calculate their manipulative acts without an ounce of self-reproach, feeling justified in their actions. Due to this absence of self-reflection, seeking professional help isn't something a psychopath often considers as they do not perceive a need for it. While the DSM the 5th of May catalogued them under ASPD, being aware of these subtle divergences can help you navigate social landscapes, decide who to trust, or whom to give a wide berth. Now as we come to a close, ponder over this, could someone you know exhibit these tendencies? It wouldn't be too surprising. And remember, psychopathy or sociopathy is more than just an act. It's a profound, ingrained part of someone's psychological makeup. Concluding our deep dive into this captivating yet unsettling subject, I invite you to explore further. If you're intrigued by the possibility that someone you know might exhibit these traits, there's a comprehensive quiz linked below. Analyze their behaviors and determine if they hold psychopathic or sociopathic tendencies or perhaps, they may exemplify neither. Now, if you believe understanding these complexities added value to your knowledge, Remember, as you step back into your day, to contemplate which actions from our discussion will impact your approach to relationships and personal discernment. If you've made it this far and found the insights we've shared today valuable, consider showing appreciation with a tip that reflects the enlightenment you've received. The link awaits in the description. And before you move on, if you believe in gaining wisdom and fortify your understanding of the world and its diverse personalities, subscribe, like this video, and ring the notification bell you never know just how empowering the next video could be. Thank you for watching and journeying with me through the shadowy realms of the mind. Here's to wisdom, to insight, and to making informed decisions. Stay curious and take care.